Hello, today I going to discuss about direct acting and reverse acting for actuator valve body of the control valve. And I also will talk about briefly about the direct acting and reverse acting of the positioner. First, I will discuss about the control valve. This is the main topic on today. Okay. When we look at this uh, picture, how do we know this actuator is direct acting or reverse acting? And how we know this valve body is direct acting or reverse acting? Okay, for a control valve as shown here, basically we know that control valve consists of two main portion. Actuator portion and the valve body portion. Okay, this actuator consists of two parts, the upper part and the lower part, okay? And it is separated by a diaphragm here, okay? So how do we know this actuator is a direct acting or reverse acting? Okay, for direct acting actuator, the air is applied to the upper portion, the upper part of the actuator. This is a direct acting actuator. If the air or the pneumatic air is applied to the okay lower part of the actuator this is called reverse acting actuator okay as for the valve body how do we know it is a direct acting or reverse acting valve body okay by looking at the plug location okay if the plug is located above the valve body orifice it is called direct acting valve body okay if the plug okay the plug is located below the orifice this is called reverse acting valve body okay in this example you can see these two plug is actually located above the orifice okay this is above the orifice okay because you see when the stem go down, the plug will go down and close the orifice. Actually, the plug is located above the orifice. So these two valve body is a direct acting valve body. As for these two control valve, you can see the plug location is actually located below the orifice. You see, below the orifice. So this is these two valve bodies are reverse acting valve body. In this drawing, it is called air to close control valve. Sometimes people use other terms such as instead of air to close, they may use the terms like air to extend or spring to open or spring to retract or fill open control valve. Okay, why it this picture is uh why this in this picture this control valve is called air to close or air to extend control valve? It is because when the air is applied to the top portion of the actuator, the instrument air will push the diaphragm and the spring downward. As a result, this stem or spindle or sometimes people call shaft will extend downwards or go downwards to close the valve body. That's why it is called air to close or air to extend control valve. Why it is called spring to open or spring to retract or fill open control valve? Okay, because when the air is cut off, what happened? The spring that compressed just now will bounce upward. As a result, the whole stem here or spindle here will move upward or retract outward. So it is called spring to open or spring to retract. Or fill open because filming you cut off the air what happened it will move outward as a result this plug will move outward also and it open the valve body that's why it is called spring to open or spring to retract or fill open okay similarly in this case okay it is called air to open or air to retract control valve because when the air is applied to the lower portion of the actuator, it will push the diaphragm and the spring outward. As a result, 
this shaft or stem or spindle will move upward or retract outward and thus the plug will move outward and open the valve body. That's why it is called air to open or air to retract control valve. Okay, sometimes people call it spring to close or spring to extend or fill close control valve because when the air is cut off, what happened? The spring that compressed just now will bounce downward. As a result, the shaft or spindle or stem will move downward or extend downward and then cause the plug to close the valve. That's why it is called spring to close or spring to extend or fill close. Similarly, the same explanation can be applied for these two control valves. Okay, it is called air to open or air to extend control valve because when the air is applied to the upper portion of the actuator, this air will compress or will press the diaphragm and these two spring downward. As a result, the shaft or spindle or stem here will move downward or extend downward to open the valve body. Similarly for this one, it is called air to close or air to retract control valve because when the air is applied to the lower portion of the actuator, it will push the diaphragm and spring upward. As a result, the spindle or shaft or stem will move outward or retract outward. That's why it is called air to close, air to retract. Okay, as for positioner, okay, this positioner is called direct acting positioner. Okay, if the input signal is increased and the output signal produced by the positioner or the PID controller is increased also, it is called direct acting positioner. Okay, similarly, if the input signal is decreased and the output signal is de decreased also, this is called direct acting positioner. Okay, as for the reverse acting positioner, if the input signal is increased but the output signal is reduced, or vice versa, it is called reverse acting positioner. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.